All right, what we're looking at here is um, two buck converters. Uh, this is just a plain buck converter. Um, it'll do five amps, apparently, without a heat sink. Uh, this one here is also five amps, but this one has some extra crap on it, uh, that being the MPPT uh, side of the buck converter. So just a plain Jane one and one with MPPT and a heat sink which is actually on the opposite side of our constant voltage constant current control uh, module. I'm not sure why they didn't stick this on the top like they did with this one. It's the exact same module um, and that is why this one's sitting up so high because it sits on that module whereas this one sits nice and flat. So they could have put this on the top and then put the heat sink on top of it and I'm actually going to take one of the heat sinks off of this one and put on that one uh, to make this one a little better uh, handling high currents. So what I'm looking at, um, those that seen my previous videos on the wind turbine would have seen that the wind turbine had three of these in there. So upon further investigation, um, and that is our wind turbine generators in there which are nothing more than three phase printer motors, drum motors. Um, I've cleaned up one full wave bridge rectifier so far. For, that's a three phase full wave bridge rectifier. Um, and then I went from the rectifiers <coughs> into the buck converters or the MPPT buck converters. So I have found a problem with these things that I don't like <clears throat> and we're going to have a look at that very shortly. So I'm not actually going to be using these with um, the buck converters with the MPPT um, part. I'm simply going to use these ones and uh, we're going to go and have a look at why we're going to use these ones and not these garbage products. Um, <clears throat> really not much good for anything, especially uh, solar and wind turbines where the output voltage is constantly changing. So let me get this little test set up and we'll show you what's going on here and why I don't like these things, these ones, and why I'm going to be using these ones. So uh, I'll be back in a minute when we're set up and let's run through what we have and what happens when we set this thing up the way we want to set it up. Right, so we're having a look at the setup here. First we're trying our uh, buck converter with the MPPT uh, part of it on there. <clears throat> at the moment I have my power supply set at 18 volts um, and I've limited the current to 1.2 amps and our scope there is showing us the voltage on the output across our load. So our load, by the way, is that LED 12 volt um, LED spotlight from a motor vehicle, the ones that you put on a motor vehicle. Um, so what we're going to do now is we'll switch our power supply on. <clears throat> and at the moment, you can see maximum voltage the power supply can deliver <coughs> excuse me at that um, limited current value is 10.16 amps now if we look at our scope over here we can see a voltage of 10.1 volts across our load <coughs> so what we're going to do now is I'm going to adjust our MPPT pot and see what the maximum voltage we can get out of this at this limited input current is across our load. So you'll see our little red lights on there, that means it's delivering power, blah blah blah. <coughs> so I'll just zoom me out here and so I'm going to adjust this pot here which is our MPPT manual adjustment and we'll watch the voltage on the scope 
and see what the maximum voltage is we can get out of it with that limited input. So I'm winding the pot counterclockwise at the moment because <coughs> I had it wound all the way in. And now we can see the voltage is starting to go up. And see what happens there. So right about there is maximum power point. But if I get you in the shot here with the load, you can see our load here, our LED. If I go slightly too far, like that, the LED goes out. So just before it switches off is maximum power point <coughs> which is true because we can see our power supply is now 18 volts 1 amp so it's basically doing its uh, transforming at the moment and uh, doing it to its greatest value so we're happy with that we're getting absolutely the maximum power from our supply we can deliver to the load <coughs> This is all well and good if you've got a steady input supply of power. When it comes to wind generators and solar panels, you don't have that. Um, like for instance, it's a 12 volt solar panel. Um, its maximum power is delivered at about 18 volts times its current, or the maximum current it can put out, which is why I set out power supply to 18 volts. So let's say we're in a um, solar panel situation. Next thing that happens is a cloud goes over our solar or over the sun, covers the sun, um, and the voltage from our solar drops a little. So we're going to go down with one volt, like so. And what has happened now is we have zero output from our U-Butte MPPT buck converter. <clears throat> Nothing there. We have 3.1 volts across our load, which is not enough to light the LEDs up. Simply by dropping it by one volt. So as soon as the cloud goes over our solar panel and the output drops a little, which means the voltage would drop, um, that means this no longer works, it's doing absolutely nothing even though there is still available power from our solar panel. And the same would go for a wind generator, if the wind speed drops down slightly, let's say you set this all up for a certain wind speed <clears throat> and the wind drops down below that threshold, that's it, lights out, no power at all coming from your wind turbine. So. Uh, that's just garbage and absolutely good for nothing. No good for solar and no good for wind because the input always varies regardless. So even on a clear sunny day, we set this up while the uh, sun is at 12 o'clock high on our panel. Our panel's producing maximum power and we've set this up to get maximum power out of it come two o'clock in the afternoon everything drops out nothing delivered to your load so uh, this thing here just garbage absolutely no point setting the maximum power point um, at one value from your uh, power supply because as soon as that value drops slightly um, that's it shows over you get nothing this is doing absolutely nothing so uh, we won't be using that in our wind generator or our uh, solar panel on our wind turbine because um, should the wind speed drop or a cloud go over the sun, we're going to get nothing from anything. 
So now we're going to do the same test with just the uh, plain buck converter and see what happens. So I'll go and set that up, come back and see how we go. Okay, so we now have just our plain Jane buck converter hooked up. Now, as you can see over there, yonder, um, 18 volts of limited 1.2 amps as before. Um, and our load over there is as before. Our scope is hooked up as before. So um, I'm going to turn on our power supply now. And you can see it's delivering maximum current 1.2 amps by the 10.23 volts. So we've got um, no power point tracking on this module. You can see our loads lit up over there. And the voltage we have across our load is 10.1 volts, um, which is pretty consistent with the power supply's 10.2 because we would get a voltage drop through our device. Um, so at 18 volts, 1.2 amps, as we did with this, uh, we could see that we were able to adjust that up our uh, maximum power point tracking to get 10.5 volts across our load. So we're down 0.4 of a volt. So not a lot of power. But what we're going to do now is like we did before and drop the voltage down to let's say 15 so that was lower than before um, and we can still see our load is still going and we still have 10.1 volts across our load um, and with our U-Butt MPPT buck converter we'd lost everything by then so I'm pretty sure you can guess that by now we can go right down to 11 volts like yay and we are still going to deliver 10.1 volts across our load which is still running so the outcome of this story if I put these inside a wind turbine um, and I set them up to deliver maximum power at a certain wind speed should that wind speed drop I'm going to get absolutely nothing out of this so um, not much good to us even though we can get a little bit more out when we set our maximum power point um, that's not stable the input to this device is not stable when it comes to wind turbines and solar panels. This one here, although we get a little bit less power out when there's a higher voltage available on the input um, and that pulls the input voltage down to the output voltage, we are guaranteed to get that output voltage or output power um, right down until the input goes below the 10.1 volts that it's being delivered. In actual fact, we'll see how close we can get it. Let's say our solar panel drops down to 10.3 volts. So we're now 0.2 of a volt above our output voltage. And we can see that we are still delivering 10.1 volts across the load. So this one here is absolutely no good to us at all um, because there's too many variables on the input whereas this one is happy to go from 18 this one will take 36 volts on the input side drop it down to whatever voltage you set it at and if you set this at say 12 volts the input can drop from 36 right down to 12 or 12.2 and you will still get 12 volts on the output so this thing is going to cover all bases. This covers a very limited window of input power um, once you have set maximum power point. So like I said, if you set 
this on a solar panel to set it to deliver maximum power at 12 o'clock come 2 o'clock everything's going to be off you'll be getting absolutely nothing from your solar panel um, even though there's plenty there to give if it could give it this one here will just keep delivering regardless uh, right down until the solar panel voltage drops below the load voltage so there you go I won't be using these these are good for nothing unless they're sitting on your bench and um, you have a stable input um, to that device but uh, this little beauty here which is cheaper and works right across the range uh, that's the one I will be putting I have four more of them coming and there will be one each of these going into each of my turbine generators and one on the solar panel so there you go hope that helped if you're going to be using or building a wind generator um, or you want to regulate a small solar panel <clears throat> remember they're only good for five amps max um, I always set these at four max so I don't cook it but I'm going to peel this heat sink off one and stick it on the other on top of the actual um, semiconductor rather than having it underneath here and we'll just put the heat sink on top and hope that the heat flows through the board alright guys uh, we'll see you next video which is because um, some people have asked they want to uh, want me to video document the whole build on this thing so basically we've got our full wave bridge rectifier for our three phase that's going to be going into our buck converter and both of these will be stuck inside the box here uh, or inside the tube so I've only got two wires coming out uh, which are ready to go directly to the battery that I wish to charge so I haven't decided on whether I'm going to be charging a uh, 12 uh, 0.6 volt 18650 pack which is a 3S pack or I'm going to go to a 4S pack um, I think the 3S pack is better because I can drive um, a lot more range of goodies with a 3S pack uh, a 4S pack if I go and put that on an inverter it has a big flip out because it's got too many volts across it alright guys um, have a good day and um, we'll see you next time